Beginning transmission. <laughs> this is the audio log of Dr. Cool, O5 Council member, as well as Supreme Commander, Mobile Task Force Alpha 1, also known as the Red Right Hand. Hello everyone. My apologies for not being on as much as you understand the holidays can be very stressful even for us here in the Foundation. Nevertheless, to be in the Christmas spirit, I have decided to do an SCP reading. Whether or not this will make it out before Christmas or afterwards is still, yeah, to be debatable. But let us jump into this article file, a very festive one I might add, for today, shall we? Item number SCP-784 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-784 has been disguised as a gated community and is currently surrounded by a 3.5 meter high, 0.8 meter thick concrete wall to deter intrusion. The top of the wall is lined with electrified steeled cables and the gate is to be locked. Any non-Foundation personnel attempting to enter SCP-784 are not to be interfered with due to the possibility of provoking a violent reaction from the occupants of SCP-784. Non-Foundation personnel exiting SCP-784 are to be detained, questioned, and released following administration of a Class B anesthetic. Foundation personnel entering SCP-784 are to be dressed in traditional Christmas wear prior to entering SCP-784. The area composing SCP-784 is to be monitored remotely by a Foundation-controlled weather balloon in the event that personnel are required to enter SCP-784. All involved personnel must have memorized the entire contents of the <laughs> Beginner's Guide to Christmas Carols they are to be checked for precision prior to entering SCP-784. Due to SCP-784's proximity to suburban housing developments, as well as the ramifications of provoking SCP-784-1, patrols within SCP-784 are to be unarmed, except during a Noel event. In the case of an unexpected Noel event, members of SCP-784-1 are to be restrained as non-violently as possible, while Foundation personnel prepare Procedure 784-C. Description SCP-784 is a neighborhood in the town of Texas. Currently, SCP-784 is made up of 24 houses and two apartment buildings, all of which are decorated with the brand Christmas lights at a density of approximately 15 lights per square meter of housing. SCP-784 will always be covered by between 12 and 33 centimeters of snow, though no unseasonable weather will occur above SCP-784. All houses within SCP-784 are occupied by a variety number of instances of SCP-784-1. SCP-784-1 is composed mostly of adult humans, all of whom wear sweaters, typically associated with holiday gift-giving. The number of unique instances of SCP-784-1 within SCP-784 has been estimated at 300. Instances of SCP-784-1 have not been observed engaging in reproductive activity, and no instances of SCP-784-1 have ever been observably been born within SCP-784. Instances of SCP-784-1 appear to age normally, though the death of an instance of SCP-784-1 has never been observed by Foundation personnel. All instances of SCP-784-1 express traits commonly associated with Christmas spirit throughout the year. These traits include singing of Christmas carols, performance of plays commonly associated with the birth of Christ, and various eggnog-related festivities. These activities are engaged in daily, though specific activities will never repeat more than once per week. During daylight hours, instances of SCP-784-1 will engage in activities such as gift exchanges and home decoration. Post-sunset activities include decorating of foreign objects as well as vandalism, 
which is typically holiday-themed. A Foundation supply convoy refueling overnight near SCP-784 attracted an unprecedented response from SCP-784-1, which proceeded to 1. Egg several in-transit prefabricated buildings. 2. Convert a Humvee into a sleigh. 3. Replace a shipment of fragmentation grenades with similar appearing glass ornaments. 4. Fill the gas tank of several vehicles with brand eggnog. And 5. Weld steel antlers onto 156 safety helmets. Any living creature within SCP-784 not viewed as displaying adequate Christmas spirit will become the focus of all instances of SCP-784-1 within approximately 4 meters. In the case of an animal, instances of SCP-784-1 will be called from the nearest house and place a holiday-themed accessory on the focus. Observed decorations have included 15 collars, red with a small bill, 7 reindeer antlers, 5 red Santa hats, and 1 full-body reindeer holiday outfit. Human subjects who do not meet SCP-784's criteria for, quote, Christmas spirit, will be assaulted by SCP-784-1, incapacitated and forcibly directed into the nearest household. They will not be seen until the following day, when they will exit the household dressed similarly to the other instances of SCP-784-1. Attempts to retrieve affected personnel have met with great resistance on both part of SCP-784-1 and the affected individual himself. The criteria which SCP-784 follows for definition of Christmas spirit appear to be extremely broad. See Adenindum 784-A for a complete log of personnel abducted and assumed reasons for abductions. Approximately once per month, SCP-784-1 will attempt to exit SCP-784 and enter the surrounding suburban community. This is referred to by on-site personnel as a Noel event. During a Noel event, each instance of SCP-784-1 will carry a string of Christmas lights, estimated to be 15 meters long. Instances of SCP-784-1 will attach these lights to any nearby house, which will become decoratively and functionally identical to all other houses within SCP-784. Signs of an incoming Noel event include increased festivity during the day preceding the event, excessive eggnog consumption by a significant portion of SCP-784-1, and an increase in the number of decorations present within SCP-784. Procedure 784-C is to be executed prior to the occurrence of a Noel event. Foundation personnel are to dress themselves in traditional Santa outfits and distribute themselves near the exit of SCP-784. They are to begin singing Good King Winchestless and distributing non-alcoholic eggnog to other personnel. On the arrival of SCP-784-1, personnel are to distribute eggnog mixed with a mild sedative to the crowd. Personnel are to appear friendly and cheerful at all times, as SCP-784-1 has proven capable of abducting personnel while nearly unconscious. Following the distribution of eggnog, personnel are encouraged to sing carols associated with peace and goodwill. Silent Night has proven most effective. Instances of SCP-784-1 will begin to sing along, and personnel are to accept their choice of song. SCP-784-1 will begin to fall unconscious as the night progresses. Unconscious instances of SCP-784-1 will be removed to nearby houses by other instances, and personnel are not to interfere with this process. Any interference with the actions of SCP-784-1 may trigger a violent response and will wake all instances of SCP-784-1. Instances of SCP-784-1 not affected by Procedure 784-C are to be silently incapacitated when no longer visible from the gates of the community and returned after all other instances of SCP-784-1 have re-entered SCP-784. In the event that Procedure 784-C fails, 
Foundation personnel are to release an aerosolized sleeping gas. Foundation personnel are to restrain instances of SCP-784-1 until the gas takes effect, at which time all instances are to be returned to SCP-784. Standard cover story 139, Drunken Football, is to be used to respond to any concerns expressed by nearby residents. Now, Addendum. Addendum 784-A, action taken by personnel and action taken by SCP-784-1. Our first instance includes Agent Paulson on patrol within SCP-784, wished a nearby instance of SCP-784-1 happy holidays. Approximately eight instances of SCP-784-1 surrounded Agent Paulson, who was unable to escape. Paulson was dragged into a nearby home. Incident number two. Agent Matthews sang the incorrect verse of Silent Night while on night patrol within SCP-784. Multiple instances of SCP-784-1 incapacitated Matthews non-violently using a nearby string of decorative lights. Attempted intervention by Agent Sanderson led to the involvement of a large crowd of SCP-784-1, which overwhelmed both agents. Matthews and Sanderson were dragged into a nearby home, after which personnel reported hearing the sound of Christmas carols from within the home for several days. Incident number three. Agent Anderson collided with a lawn ornament, apparently a Santa in the style of the traditional lawn gnome. Anderson proceeded to swear violently for the next 14 seconds. Three nearby instances of SCP-784-1 held Anderson in place. A fourth emerged from the nearby home with a quart of eggnog, which Anderson was forced to ingest. Anderson collapsed and was dragged into the home from which the eggnog was retrieved. And finally, Incident 4, Agent Davids, was presented with a gift by a child instance of SCP-784-1. Davids accepted the gift, but apparently failed to react with the, quote, proper enthusiasm at the time. Davids was incapacitated by a child instance of SCP-784-1, which tackled his legs. Several children emerged from a nearby home before Davids recovered, and then dragged Davids into the home which they had exited. Alright, well, that is our report for today. I hope this helps out our field agents that are overlooking this SCP object. Be very vigilant and very careful. We usually have a Noel event between the times of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And since it happens almost every year, it might well as happen this year. So be on alert, agents, as well as Mobile Task Force members. But that shall be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And please show your support by leaving a comment and a like down below, as this will allow more agents to see these videos. This is Dr. Cool. 05 Command, signing off and wishing you all a Merry Christmas.